Welcome back, everyone. You're tuned in to the HIV RNA Test Guide. Glad to be here. As always, we're your trusted source for HIV testing info across the U.S., you know, with our network of over 4,500 testing labs. That's right. And today, uh, we're doing a deep dive into some really groundbreaking stuff happening in HIV research in 2025. Yeah, today we're looking at two uh, really fascinating areas in HIV research. Yes, AGT-103T gene therapy and the HTI therapeutic vaccine. Right. So what are they really about? Mm -hmm. And, you know, could they actually change the whole landscape of HIV treatment? Let's try and break it down. Yeah, and it's important for you listening to understand that we're really exploring possibilities here that could be, well, truly transformative. Okay, so before we jump into the specifics of AGT-103T and HTI, maybe we should clarify what a therapeutic HIV vaccine actually is, because it sounds a bit different. That's a, that's a really key distinction. Good point. We usually think vaccine, we think prevention, right? stop you getting infected in the first place. Yeah, like the flu shot or something. Exactly. But therapeutic vaccines, they're different. They're for people already living with HIV. Okay. The aim isn't stopping that initial infection. It's about helping the body control or maybe even get rid of the virus that's already there. Ah, uh, okay. So it's not a shield. It's more like... It's like specialized training, yeah. Training for your immune system to fight better against a threat it's already facing. That makes a lot more sense. So not stopping it getting in. Hmm but upgrading your internal defenses to handle it. Precisely. And the two leading this charge, as you said, are AGT-103T, that's the gene therapy, and HTI, the synthetic vaccine. Right. Those are our main focuses for this deep dive. Okay, let's uh, let's start with AGT-103T. Tell us about that one. Right, AGT-103T, this comes from American Gene Technologies. And it's, well, it's really innovative stuff. It's not a traditional vaccine at all. No. No, it's a highly personalized gene therapy. The level of tailoring here is uh, quite something. Personalized how? What's the process? Well, it starts by taking a patient's own T cells, you know, those key immune cells. Right from their blood. Exactly, collected right from their blood. It's like gathering your own personal army, your immune soldiers. Okay, got it. And then these specific cells, they're taken to a lab, and that's where the, uh, the genetic modification happens. Modifying them how? To do what? The crucial part is making them resistant to HIV. Think of it like um, changing the locks on the doors of these cells so HIV's key just doesn't work anymore. Wow, so the virus can't get in and hijack them. Exactly. They become protected, Ooh. fortified against the virus's attack. So these newly toughened up T cells, they go back into the patient. That's right. They're infused back into the patient's bloodstream. It's like sending in reinforcements, but these are reinforcements that HIV can't easily infect and turn into virus factories. So the goal is, what? A stronger immune system overall? The ultimate aim is, yeah, to create a durable immune response, one that can naturally keep the HIV virus suppressed. The hope is that these modified cells stick around mm -hmm. and keep the viral load, the amount of virus in the body really low, ideally without needing those daily antiretroviral drugs. Right, the RT. Exactly, and that's where you hear the term functional cure. It doesn't necessarily mean the virus is totally eradicated, but it's controlled to such low levels by the body itself that it doesn't cause illness, even off medication. And the early signs are positive. Our info mentions clinical trials. Yeah, the phase one trial results suggested it was safe, which is always the first hurdle. Of course. And importantly, showed those promising signs of controlling the virus without art. That's potentially huge, a massive shift, like you said. Okay, that's AGT-103-TT, gene therapy, modifying your own cells. Now let's switch over to HTI. How does that work? Right. HTI. That stands for HIVCAT T-cell immunogen, developed over in Spain by the HIFAT research team. Yeah. This takes a, uh, a different route, but still really interesting. HTI works more like we think of a vaccine working. Oh, okay. In that it aims to train your existing immune system. But remember, again, this is for folks already living with HIV. Right. Therapeutic, not preventative. Exactly. The focus here is really enhancing your body's natural ability to recognize and then destroy cells that are infected with HIV. So no modifying my cells in a lab this time. It's more like yeah. giving my immune system better instructions. That's a good way to put it. Better instructions, better training. It uses synthetic versions of specific bits of the HIV virus. Synthetic bits, not the whole virus. No, definitely not. No risk of infection. Just specific parts like molecular wanted posters to show the immune system exactly what to look for. Okay, and how do these wanted posters get delivered? 
They use something called a viral vector. You can think of it like a harmless delivery truck right. that carries these synthetic HIV parts into the body. The whole setup is designed to really kickstart a response from two key types of T cells. Which ones? Your CD4 plus T cells, those are the helper cells that coordinate everything, and your CD8 plus T cells. Those are often called the killer T cells because they're the ones that directly find and eliminate infected cells. So it's trying to ramp up both the coordination and the direct attack. Exactly. A sort of one-two punch yeah. stimulated by the vaccine. And thinking practically, our notes highlighted some potential advantages for HDI. Something about manufacturing. Yes, that's a really critical point, actually. HTI is seen as potentially easier to manufacture and more scalable. Scalable meaning easier to make lots of it. Exactly. Compared to AGT-103T, which needs that very personalized, complex process for each patient drawing blood, lab modification, infusion. Yeah, that sounds intensive. It is. HTI avoids all that. Because it's a more standardized vaccine, the thinking is it could be produced at a lower cost and distributed much more widely, more easily. That could make a huge difference globally. The massive difference, plus the early trials are showing strong immune responses, which is definitely encouraging at this stage. Okay, so two really different strategies. Let's, um, let's try and put them side by side. Our info has a comparison. Yeah, that comparison is useful. It crystallizes the differences. So type. AGT-103T is cell therapy, HTI is a therapeutic vaccine. Right, and personalization, AGT-103T is super high, uses your own cells, autologous they call it, mm -hmm. from oneself. Yeah. Whereas HTI is low personalization, more like a one-size-fits-many approach. And how they focus the immune attack. Yeah. AGT-103T focuses on making those CD4 plus cells resistant, the very cells HIV targets. HDI aims broader boosting both CD4 plus helpers and CD8 plus killer cells, improving the overall team effort, you could say. Got it. Then there's cost and complexity. AGT-103T looks high on both fronts. Yeah, likely quite high. HTI is listed as moderate cost, lower complexity, relatively speaking, of course. And trial phase. You mentioned AGT-103T is phase one. Correct. And HTI is a bit further along, currently in phase two trials. Does that mean HTI is closer to being available? Well, it suggests it's progressed further through the clinical trial pipeline, but both are still, you know, relatively early days in the grand scheme of drug development. Lots more research needed for both. Right. And finally, availability or scalability. AGT-103T is limited because it's so personalized. It, inherently so, whereas HTI, with that simpler manufacturing, has the potential for much broader reach, more scalable. Our notes have that analogy. AGT-103T is like the Rolls-Royce. Ah, yeah, the Rolls-Royce. Powerful, precise, probably expensive, complex to make. And HTI is more like a reliable electric car. Yeah, accessible, scalable, easier to produce maybe. It's a helpful way to kind of frame the differences. It is. Okay, so that's the how. What about the how well? What's the actual research saying about effectiveness so far? Right, the results. For AGT-103T, the key finding mentioned is achieving that functional cure state in some test subjects. Meaning? Meaning they saw a significant reduction in viral load even when they stopped their regular RT medication under study conditions. That's a really big outcome. Wow, okay. The potential to stop daily meds? That's the major hope there, yes. It's <laughs> definitely promising, though still early. Now for HTI. What's the research showing there? The research indicates it improves the T-cell response, boosts that immune reaction we talked about. Okay. And this improved response has been linked to delaying viral rebound, meaning the virus takes longer to come back up if people temporarily stop their RT as part of a clinical trial. So AGT-103T is aiming more directly, perhaps, at getting people off meds entirely. That seems to be the ultimate goal, yes. Drug-free remission. Whereas HTI is maybe more about strengthening the immune system's own control, possibly leading to better long-term health, maybe less reliance on meds, but perhaps not total elimination of them. That seems a fair summary of the current focus, yes. Enhancing viral control via the immune system. Okay. And it's really important to add, these might not be either scenarios in the long run. Uh, you mean using them together? Exactly. There's huge potential for combination therapies. You could imagine, say, using a gene therapy like AGT-103T to really knock the virus down, mm -hmm. and then using a therapeutic vaccine like HTI to kind of supercharge the immune system to keep it down, mm. or combining them with other strategies people are working on, like latency reversal agents or broadly neutralizing antibodies. They're pulling out all the socks. That definitely paints a more hopeful, comprehensive picture. Okay, thinking about practicalities again, who might benefit most from each one? 
based on what we know now. Well, given the complexity, the need for advanced labs and facilities, AGT-103T, at least initially, seems more suited for patients in places like the U.S. With access to those big medical centers. Right. People participating in clinical trials, perhaps, and likely those who are really motivated to find a way off daily RT and are okay with the concept of gene therapy. Makes sense. And HTI. With its potential for easier production, lower cost, scalability, HTI looks really valuable for, say, global health initiatives. Reaching more people. Exactly. It could be particularly useful for people maybe earlier in their HIV journey or in regions where consistent lifelong access to RT is... uh, more challenging, lower resource settings. So potentially very different target populations, at least at first. Could be. But the key thing is both represent this exciting shift away from the current reality of lifelong daily medication for everyone. Yeah, that feels like the main takeaway. Okay, let's look ahead then. What kind of future are these therapies pointing towards? I think the future they hint at is one where living with HIV is just fundamentally different than it is today. Imagine managing the virus without that daily pill burden. Or maybe even achieving a long-term remission where your own immune system keeps the virus suppressed indefinitely. That's the potential endgame. And ADT-103T and HTI are kind of leading the charge towards that? They're definitely at the forefront, showing what might be possible. They're paving the way. It really does feel like we could be, I don't know, on the edge of a major change in HIV treatment. Our notes stress the need for continued research, though. Yeah. And funding awareness. Oh, absolutely critical. We need more time, larger studies, to really understand the long-term safety and effectiveness. Right. We need to figure out the best way to use them, maybe in combination, like we said, funding is the fuel for all of that, and awareness. Yeah. Well, that helps reduce stigma, encourages participation in trials, keeps the momentum going. Our info also mentioned keeping an eye on things like World AIDS Day research highlights for updates. Yeah, staying informed is key. Things are moving fast in this field. We could potentially see a revolution in HIV treatment within the next decade or so if things continue to progress. Okay, so let's bring it back. We asked at the start which therapy is better. After this whole discussion, what's the verdict? Well, like with so many things in medicine and science, the answer is probably it depends. Depends on what? It depends on the context, the priorities, the individual situation. If you're looking for that highly precise, potentially RT-free future, and you have access to the required advanced care, AGT-103T holds out that incredible promise, the Rolls-Royce, right? Right. Precision, potential remission. But if the priority is broader access, scalability, boosting the immune system in a way that's easier to deploy globally, especially in resource-limited areas, then HTI looks like a really strong practical contender, the reliable electric car. So different strengths for different needs. Exactly. The real takeaway, I think, isn't about picking a winner. It's recognizing that both approaches are incredibly valuable. We probably need both and others like them. They offer different kinds of hope, different paths towards that future where HIV is managed very differently. That's a really clear way to put it. Both are needed. Both offer hope. Okay. And for you listening today, particularly if you connect with resources like HIV RNA Test Guide. Your trusted source for testing. Yeah, with those 4,500 plus labs nationwide. Remember, taking charge of your health is key. You can visit HIVRNETGuide.com. That's HIVRNATestGuide.com for quick, confidential, affordable testing anywhere in the U.S. Absolutely. And maybe just take a moment to think about what these advancements we've discussed, what they could really mean for the future of HIV treatment. What questions has this deep dive sparked for you? Yeah, definitely something to ponder. The field is moving, and staying informed, like you said, is powerful. 